I got asked if I knew anything about sodium jokes. Nah, I don't know any. <clears throat> In this final program on our periodic table, I want to take a look at two chemical families. The first family are the alkali metals. Let's locate where they be on the periodic table. That's this group over here. All of these finish with the configuration. We'll take hydrogen out because it's not a metal. They all finish S1. Now things that these things have in common, they're all easily ionized. They have very few protons for a given energy level and as a result weakly hold on to their electron. They're fairly low melting metals, but as with all metals, they're good conductors of heat and electricity. They're also some of the most reactive metals. Another family we'll look briefly at today, over on the other end or side of the periodic table, are the halogens. The halogens are in this region of the periodic table. All of these finish with a configuration of P5. These substances have very high ionization energies. There are a lot of protons for any given energy level. They also have high electronegativities, high desires for electrons that are in a bond. They also come in a variety of states. Unlike our metals on the other side, these come in a host of states, as a result varying melting points, and also a host of different colors. What we want to look at in particular is reactions of these two chemical families. So let's begin with putting an alkali metal into water. This is an experiment many of you probably would have done. All alkali metals will react with water. What I'll do is I'll choose one as an example. Let's say we start with the element sodium. It's in the solid state and we drop it into some water liquid. One of the things that we produce in this reaction is hydrogen gas. That's actually why you have a flame here. The hydrogen gas has been ignited. So all alkali metals will liberate hydrogen gas. And you'll also produce a second product, a base, which then dissolves aqueous in the remaining water. Another product is the heat. In this case, there was sufficient heat generated in this reaction to ignite the hydrogen gas. So you'll also get heat from all of these reactions. Now to balance this one up, I believe we need a two here and a two here and a two here. I can replace this with any of the alkali metals and that will then result in substituting the similar metal on this side, but they'll all balance in the same ratio. Alkali metals will also react with halogens. Here's an example of sodium reacting with chlorine. So again, I'll start with my reactant. Now sodium in this case to initiate the reaction is often melted. And then it's placed in with chlorine, a diatomic molecule. Those then combine together and we call a synthesis reaction to make ordinary table salt sodium chloride, which is a solid. To balance that, two here and a two here. This pattern can be repeated with any of the alkali metals and with any of the halogens. So I could use fluorine gas, iodine solid, bromine liquid. Similarly, I could replace this with cesium or potassium or lithium and the same pattern would emerge. The last type of reaction I want to look at are halogens reacting with ions of themselves. We call this the halogens reacting with the halides. So here's how this works. Let's take a halogen, say chlorine, Cl2. We mix it with potassium bromide. 
Now, this species is called a halide. It's a halogen that has lost and has gained an electron. It has a one minus charge. And over on this side, this is what we refer to as a halogen. When these two are mixed together, they undergo what's called a single displacement reaction. And these two species will change positions. So the bromine will be kicked out and pair up with itself because it's diatomic. And now the K is with the chlorine. Now this would be, let's put the states in, this would be dissolved in water. Bromine is a liquid. KBr would be aqueous and chlorine is a gas. So here we have what we call a displacement reaction. Now, this reaction doesn't always take place. It's not guaranteed the two will switch positions. Let me show you an example of what I mean by that. Suppose I had taken chlorine gas. Instead of potassium bromide, I'd used potassium fluoride instead. Here I have again a halogen. Here I have again a halide. In this case, there's no reaction. They don't switch partners. Well, why is it sometimes they react and sometimes they don't react? The secret is to look at something called their electronegativity. You might recall that at the top of the periodic table, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, as we move up this way, the electronegativity increases. Fluorine, in fact, wants electrons more than anybody else. So let's look at how that plays out in this problem. In this lower reaction, fluorine possesses a one minus charge. In this case, fluorine has one gained an electron, this one. Chlorine right now is sharing, so chlorine doesn't have an electron. Chlorine has no shared electrons. This situation is a stable one. According to our table, fluorine wants electrons more than chlorine. And here, fluorine has the electron. So there's no reason for the reaction to take place. In this example, bromine has the electron. And chlorine, again, doesn't. But from my table, chlorine wants electrons more. This is an unstable situation. Chlorine would prefer to have that electron. And as a result, we get a reaction taking place whereby they exchange. So now chlorine over here, now chlorine has the electron. These patterns of reactions are ones that you'll need to commit to memory. In our next series, we'll take a look at chemical bonding.